Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And uh, in the segment of uh, our program, we are going uh, to talk about International Youth Day, which uh, was marked on the 12th of August. And uh, we are joined today by Mr. Uh, Mustafa Ibrahim. He is Vice President of the uh, Global Youth uh, uh, Ambassadors Team. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Um, thank you, uh, uh, Mustafa, for joining us. Now, the United Nations uh, celebrates International Youth Day this year under the theme of uh, uh, transforming mm -hmm. education. Uh, could you talk to us uh, more on that? Okay. Uh, the International Youth Day, the United Nations has been celebrating it since 2000, uh, 2000 since the year 2000. Uh, it's mainly for uh, the cultural exchange and empowering youth for uh, for peace and prosperity of the world uh, each year it has a different theme uh, this year's theme is called transforming education uh, as you know as part of the united nations sustainable development goals the goal number four is called quality education it calls for an equitable inclusive education for all and uh, through the process of working on education with youth since 2015 until now uh, the youth recommendation across the world have recommended new ways and new methodologies in education. Uh, we have new uh, prospects of, ha of how we see education. Education now is not just a classroom with a teacher and school. We have new ways of educating people through uh, what's called the non-formal education, education with music, education with games, education with entertainment. And that's, why, uh, that's how we see, um, how, how that's how the, um, the United Nations sees transforming education into a more inclusive, that um, includes all uh, aspects of, uh, of life and includes all age groups. Education is not just for the youngsters or, or the adolescents. You, education is for uh, the, uh, the older and the elderly. Uh, mm. Also using different ways and different messages in transforming education from the classroom to be all around you, all yeah. around the environment. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, tell us more about the choice of August 12th to celebrate uh, this occasion. Well, I don't really know the why they choose this uh, special uh, day. Uh, uh, part this day in particular. Yes. Uh, but the, the United Nations has, a, has a, an agenda yeah. for the whole year, uh, for the different years. Yes. Uh, there is August 12th for the International Youth Day, uh, the very famous uh, March 8th mm. for the International Women's Day, yes. uh, the, I guess uh, the 10th of, uh, of December for the International Volunteer Day, and so on. There is a full agenda for f the International Days for the United Nations. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, now, Mustafa, I want to go back to the very interesting theme of transforming education. Uh, b because you mentioned that uh, you know education should not only be for in the classroom or for a certain age category it is to note though that 1.8 billion people in the world according exactly. to recent statistics that's all that's more than 25 percent or almost 25 percent uh, are aged between 10 and 24 so but uh, how can education reach those who are not lucky enough okay. to be in schools I mean is that part of the transforming education area exactly. and how can we reach those unlucky uh, exactly uh, so uh, kids. there are two uh, roads you go by the road of formal education and the informal education uh, regarding formal education we need more support from the government and the governance in establishing special schools for the elderly uh, which te teaches them the basics of reading and writing and the basics uh, the basic education that you need to live by. Um, where the, the role of youth and the role of uh, society and civil society organizations goes to, towards the road of um, informal education. Me and my team were um, sort of lucky to organize such methods for informal education. In the last um, February, uh, we designed um, a set of games that's designed to deliver awareness messages to men, older men from 18 to 35 regarding uh, topics related to sexual and reproductive health, um, which includes the reproductive health for women, family planning, uh, the, um, uh, 
uh, adulthood, uh, manhood, stuff like that. And we integrated it into a, a theme of games like snake and ladder, like dart games. And we went to um, a sort of rural communities in 10th of Ramadan, in Abur, in 6th of October, in Giza. And we worked with, um, with older men who came and played and played soccer and played football and at the same time learned information for the first time in their life. And actually we saw lives being transformed and people changing Beautiful. their perspective about early marriage, about female genital mutilation, about family planning, Beautiful. just from coming to an event to play. So that's what we see the new way of educating. creating trans oh, of educating people. You don't need to go to a lecture or talk to a professor. There is a way called peer education that you learn from your peers, that you learn from other people, that you learn through playing a game. Uh, that's how we could reach out to those outside the age group of being inside a classroom. Beautiful. So, um, Mustafa, what are uh, other activities for the Global Youth Ambassadors team? Okay, um, the Global Youth Ambassadors team, we work on three aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our grand vision is empowering youth through participating in community. Uh, community we work service? In community service, mm -hmm. yeah. We design community initiative and work in projects with international organization in order to empower youth and help the community yeah. at the same time. That's how we see um, our vision to change the world. Uh, we work on three main groups, the children, the youth, and women. Uh, for children, we are working on education and on health awareness. We, uh, as we said, we, uh, we are, working, we are in a, currently in a phase where we design many forms of non-formal education mm. methods uh, to raise awareness about different topics regarding uh, either sexual and reproductive health, regarding nutrition, regarding communication skills and leadership skills, um, decision-making skills, negotiation skills, uh, different skills. Also, we uh, work with, um, with uh, women in women empowerment and uh, promoting their sexual and reproductive health, their ways of um, um, empower, uh, sort of economic empowerment. Mm. We also uh, recently um, created a new community initiative called mm. Al Qalb Hu mm. uh, the language fort. Uh, it works on um, empowering those with hearing disabilities through um, including them in our community. Fantastic. Uh, we actually had, um, we actually won uh, the first prize in a competition held by the Ministry of Youth called Al Afdal. And we are working towards phase two in expanding our initiative. Fantastic. Now, uh, Mustafa, what do you think of President Sisi's support for youth uh, by enhancing their potential through conferences uh, held specially for them? Uh, we've seen this for many years now, uh, so as to be able to face their challenges, to have a say in their uh, lives and in and, 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 and their future. Uh, the, the empowerment of, uh, of youth and the president's initiatives uh, on that and, and the conferences, the Sharm el-Sheikh International Youth Conference and other conferences. Well, His Excellency President Sisi, since he started um, his presidency like five years ago, um, he clearly identified the youth as the main factor or the main uh, engine for development. And through the five years, we've seen a great development in youth engagement and in youth empowerment uh, through the, what you can call the presidential program for youth, which include many activities uh, that started with the World Youth Forum, then the uh, regular uh, youth meetings, and now the presidential uh, program, the national presidential program, and the African presidential program. So you kind of see the development throughout the five years uh, from just one conference or forum that comes out with recommendations that's been implemented in the next year through the next conference to come out of programs and the programs come out of more programs. You can see that the, the development and expansion and the, include, the inclusion of more youth and the encouragement of more youth to participate in the program, in, in this presidential program. Excellent. So um, you, you kind of need to see the larger image throughout the five years that right. go on top and see the development from conference to conference and from forum to forum to see the, and how many, like, in 2016, how many youths participated in the forum and, uh, or in presidential 
So uh, you personally feel empowered and, yeah, and feel I feel empowered. Uh, I, yani, uh, compared to to the last years, we feel more uh, empowered. We feel more encouraged by many organizations uh, and by the presidential uh, uh, initiatives. initiatives. And programs, yeah. uh, we feel empowered by the ministries through the many competitions and by international organizations through the many competitions uh, they make for community initiative. Uh, initiatives. So um, I see we are going on the right track, and I see. But we still need more work. We still we still need to uh, expand the culture of volunteerism and community service Absolutely. throughout the, uh, the youth. There are many 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 powerful youth out there uh, who have many ideas that can be implemented can benefit this country. So great. Uh, we're trying our best. Great. So uh, tell me about uh, the future plan of your team. Um, the future plan of our team, we are actually starting a new project mm. uh, called uh, Y Lead, Youth Lead. Um, it's with uh, the IFA, it's a, a Germ it's a the mm. German cooperation yes. and um, uh, an organization called CDS. Uh, we are work uh, the project aims towards um, raising awareness and empowering youth for the local councils. Um, we designed uh, the, the project designed something called a simulation game, which is another form of informal e informal education where you uh, you are kind in um, in a theme. You take a role of a person, uh, like a character with uh, an attributes, and you live the simulation of a local council of or of a of a, a village or a city where you where you and the peers and the, the, the players take a decision to take decision making roles and negotiation roles to come out with an uh, to take an outcome at the end of the game. So we are uh, planning on implementing these games uh, with the Ministry of Youth and in other communities in order to raise awareness to people uh, about the local council and how important they are as they are in the presidential plan and agenda for the next uh, for the upcoming period to empower the local councils to be um, to start the local council elections and uh, taking taking more effect in the community we are also planning on creating a new uh, initiative that's called or creating a new phrase for a new initiative that's called sports for development um, good uh, the, um, creating designing more more games that include more aspects or more topics that we can share with people um, we are also our our team is participating in something called ISIC international student environmental coalition uh, it's a coalition across 60 countries uh, which works for environment and we are planning for new initiatives that serve the environment and uh, calls for climate action and plastic action, stuff like that. Very good. Um, now, Mustafa, uh, c could you talk to, to, to us about the, um, uh, the uh, global youth uh, ambassadors team? How, uh, fr yeah, how many members are you from how many countries? What do you, um, okay. How do you connect together? How do you plan together? How okay. do you follow up on your... Um, plans and uh, goals okay our story is actually nice in 2014 uh, Ban Ki-moon which was then the uh, UN Secretary General, General of the United yeah. Nations uh, started an initiative with Gordon Brown who was then UK, the, uh, the UK uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, called the Global Youth Ambassadors um, the idea came from the Goodwill Ambassadors who are celebrities uh, taking a humanitarian or uh, volunteering action and they observed that the global as a goodwill ambassador um, make a lot of fuss and gather a lot of views around them and make a lot of impact but they lack something called moderation they are in the end they are celebrities they are um, not committed to an agenda they don't make reports they don't um, monitor their work they just uh, they are celebrities uh, so the idea was making an ambassadors from youth themselves to gather the youth around them and make an uh, impact. So finally, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mustafa Ibrahim, Vice President of the Global Youth Ambassadors Team. Thank you for being with us and happy aid to you. Thank you, Mustafa, very, very thank much. You. Happy aid. Thank you, Shireen. Happy aid to you and happy aid to your dear viewers.
And uh, by that, uh, dear viewers, we come uh, to the end of uh, today's edition of the Breakfast uh, Show. See you tomorrow with a new clue.